to your home. So if you're looking for technology to help you stay connected to work, school, family and friends, a home office desk, a spare bed, or if you need to replace a washing machine or fridge, then visit us at harveynorman.ie. And right now, get free delivery on all orders of furniture, beds and mattresses over €200. Euro. Harvey Norman, your appliances, technology, furniture and bedding specialists. Go! Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. All right, you're very welcome back. It is Thursday's Off The Ball. John Giles is going to be with us in just a moment. Just to let you know, though, before we talk to John, that turning our attention to a different code of football, our American football show, The Snap. We'll be taking a break tomorrow, but make sure to sign up to our American football newsletter, which is OTB Club Gridiron. We've got the latest American football news from both Amer Ireland and the USA podcasts and video content. You can subscribe at offtheball.com forward slash club gridiron and enjoy all that OTB Club Gridiron has to offer. Now, for the last few weeks and getting us through the lockdown, John Giles has been entertaining us every Thursday evening with his all-time 11s. We've gone through a lot of the major clubs in English football, but now we're going to turn our attention to international football and get his all-time Republic of Ireland 11. And evening, John. Evening, Nathan. How are you keeping? I'm good, thanks. Keeping out of trouble so, so far. Good, good. Good to hear. Uh, you've been causing no shortage of uh, debate over... The last few weeks, a lot of people outraged at your Leeds United selection last week, John. Uh, that, yeah. that you didn't include yourself. No, I, I, I won't. I, I don't include myself in any of these, uh, uh, Nathan. So, so no. it'll be it'll, self, it'll, self, self praise is no recommendation, Nathan. You know, if, if people want to put me in, well, that's 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 up to them. But I wouldn't I wouldn't put myself in. Well, uh, I don't I, want you. I, I dare say that uh, there would be many who will put you in this selection as well, which is the Republic of Ireland all-time eleven, going back from 1960, uh, is what we're going to go from for this all-time yeah. Ireland eleven. And going through this earlier today, there's uh, no shortage of quality options for a lot of the positions. Uh, let's start then, and let's start with the goalkeeping position. So I'll run through some of the names, but I know you put uh, together a short list, some of the names, and then you can yeah. give us who you decided upon. So for the goalkeeping position. Alan Kelly Sr., who was there from 1956 to 1973. Uh, Jerry Payton, Packy Bonner and all Packy Bonner's heroics. And then, in more modern times, Shea Given, very much the dominant Irish keeper. Who have you gone with? Um, I, had, I had Packy Bonner in that list as well. Uh, mm. Nathan. I don't, did you mention Packy? Yeah, yeah, Packy's there. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I've been drinking too much. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, great goalkeepers. I've gone for Shea Given. Okay. Yeah. So ahead of, ahead of Packy Bonner. Yeah, just about, just about. Uh, two of them terrific goalkeepers. Uh, Packy Bonner, we know in in Jack's day particularly, uh, did brilliantly in 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 the the major championships when we first qualified for when we first qualified for them. Mm. Uh, but Shay Given has been brilliant as well. Yeah, he had such longevity in his career, uh, Given and but Packy Bonner, he had the moments was the thing. He obviously had yeah. the save against against Romania, but in terms of uh, career longevity and and just general consistency, I guess, as well. It's hard to think of too many mistakes Shea Given made. I can't, I can't really remember him making any, uh, mm. important, any important uh, uh, mistakes, Nathan. You know, very steady, very good, like all top goalkeepers, good temperament, never seemed to get excited, uh, never seemed to be nervous, just got on with the job uh, and did it extremely well. There was a sense uh, at times in the Premier League that, and I heard Gary Neville speaking about this at one stage, that teams felt they could get at him, that they, you know, they could rough him up a little bit, that maybe he wasn't the most commanding, the strongest goalkeeper at times. Would you have ever seen that side of Given? I've never seen it. I've never seen that. Yeah. I've never seen him bullied around in any, in any way whatsoever. Uh, I mean, he played a long time, uh, Nathan, and uh, I don't ever remember him having... A reputation for that, and, and and he would have certainly had a reputation with the with the with the the, the long uh, period of time he had in goals that he was a that was a weak link in his game. Mm. I didn't see it. So John O'Shea, or sorry, Shea Given is uh, is the goalkeeper selected ahead yep. of Packy Bonner. We we'll move on to right back again. It's a long, long list of right backs from Dave Langan. Gary Kelly, Stephen Carr, Steve Finnan, somebody like John O'Shea, uh, Paddy Mulligan, Dennis Irwin, right up to modern times, and Seamus Coleman. So <laughs> this, I'd imagine, was one of the more difficult decisions. It was. Well, I've gone for Dennis Irwin. Right. Uh, 
And again, I feel I feel really, really sorry about leaving most of the lads out, but particularly Seamus Coleman. But Seamus is not finished yet, Nathan. And mm. I've said this a few times when we've been doing doing these particular teams that you know Seamus Coleman could play for another three, four, or five years and could prove to be in the long run uh, take over uh, from uh, Dennis Irwin. Who knows? But I, I, I do feel sorry for leaving him out in particular, as as with all the other lads. You know, it's 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 it's. It's a, it's, it's a difficult, uh, it's, well, it's not a difficult job to be doing, but there's lots of lads that I'd love to be in the, the, have in the team, and as we know, we can only pick one. And, and what's happened in recent times, and I think I was at a do last year, where I might have picked a couple of players that I didn't pick here, because right. I changed my mind on <laughs> it, you know, <laughs> because it's hard to leave somebody out. But we, we, we'll know over the years, but certainly uh, Dennis was a terrific player. Mm. He could play left back, right back, uh, calm, got on with the job, didn't seek any publicity, didn't try to show off in any way. And it's difficult, difficult, I think, for people, if they're of a certain type, playing uh, in the team that Dennis played in, with all the star names, with, with Roy Keane and, and Giggs and, and uh, Scholes and all these, you find that they don't get much publicity, Nathan, mm. fullbacks. You know, and that's why it's difficult to get on with the job. And Dennis certainly did that. He was, a, he, was, he was a terrific player for Manchester United, either at left back or right back, and a great, um, great temperament. But never saw it, never, never tried to show off in any way, never tried to be one of the stars or go out of his way to be a star. He was a star because of his ability, but a lot of stars around him who do eat up the publicity. Yeah, and you always got the sense from Dennis Irwin he was happy enough to fade into the background yeah. and, and let others take the acclaim. But the testament yeah. to him is that when you listen to former Manchester United players and they're talking about the greats of the club and they're selecting their all-time mm. teams, he's always in it. Yeah, well, that's, he, just, he just did a job, uh, uh, Nathan. But what, what made him great, and people have him in their teams like I have him in, it, in the team, is that he, he didn't try to force... Uh, he, he, his way in the team to, to, to become a star when he was a star, but to become uh, a publicity star in terms of you know the Beckhams mm. and of, of, of this world, uh, because fullbacks generally and defenders when a team is playing as well as Manchester United played, you know with Cantona and Giggs and all the Scholes and all these great players, the defenders very seldom get a mention as they say in the game. Of course, they're, 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 Alex Ferguson would have, would have loved him. Any manager would, but in, in terms of the player themselves, a lot of players do love to be famous and they love the publicity, uh, and it sometimes stops them being uh, top-class players because they go out of their way to show off. Uh, and in Dennis Irwin's case, never tried to do that. He remained a professional uh, all the time, and I don't think he cared whether he got publicity or didn't get publicity. He was part of a great team. Uh, but you do have to have the temperament. Uh, to, to do what Dennis Irwin did in the star the team. Uh, Alex Ferguson said he was his best pound-for-pound pound signing. They spent about 600000 to bring him from Oldham in, in 1990. And yeah. Also the perfect type of player for that role for Ferguson because he probably didn't need anyone to flash. He had all that elsewhere. What he needed someone was someone who would give the ball to Roy Keane at the yeah. right time or to Beckham or to Giggs, whether he was playing on the right or left, and, and let the others do what they were paid to do. Oh, definitely, but but that it, it, that's easier said than done, uh, Nathan. When the temperament of some players, uh, where there's a show off in them, uh, and they have to do stupid, and they would finish up doing stupid things around their own box to try and be the star or be one of the stars in the team. Mm. So it takes a certain temperament that uh, Dennis had, not to get uh, caught up in that particular situation. He was a professional from his tip to his toes. So Dennis Irwin at right back. Uh, your Manchester United eleven had Dennis Irwin at right back and Tony Dunn at left back. So Tony Dunn is in the mix here, but you also have the likes of Steve Staunton, who had an incredible career with over 100 caps for the Republic of Ireland. Uh, Noel Cantwell, Johnny Carey, Chris Hutton. Ian Hart was a brilliant left back in the Premier League era yeah. as well. Who have you gone for? Well, Jim Beglin was in there as mm. well, Tony Phelan, Noel Cantwell. I've, I've gone for Tony Dunn. Yeah, he was in your Manchester United side as well. Clearly a player yeah. you rate incredibly highly. Yeah, we were just ahead of Steve Staunton. And mm. Tony was very similar, <coughs> excuse me, very similar to Dennis Irwin uh, because De uh, Tony played in the star of the team, uh, particularly with uh, Charlton Best Law, uh, who got the headlines every week because they were brilliant players and did what they did. 
Tony Tony hardly ever got a mention. Again, just did did, did his job and was prepared to do that, Dennis. You know, Tony. I think Tony was the best left uh, fullback in in what was then the, the first division for about ten seasons. Right, that good. But of course, play, 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 see, playing for playing for playing for the Republic. Of course, uh, you don't get that uh, publicity in England, mm. Dennis. Like if you play for England, obviously it's all over the page. But Tony Tony Dunn play obviously played for us, uh, but wouldn't have been recognised in, in that sense in England. He, he was he was well regarded. There's no doubt about that. But Tony again had the temperament. If the if laws there are best is there, Charlton is there. I'll give it to them. They weren't seeking publicity, and and Tony did that in in a big way as well. You know, and Tony we must remember as well. Tony played. Uh, a cup winners medal with Manchester United, two championship medals with Man- and and the European Cup. So Tony got a fair fair few honours at his time at Manchester United, uh, but he, he was a unsung hero. Uh, very, very, temperament very very similar to Dennis Irwin. Mm. Just did his job, get on it, didn't seek any publicity, uh, and get, and gave it to the players like Law and, and uh, Best and Charlton particularly. They got most of the publicity. Uh, at Manchester United in those days, quite rightly too. But that, that never bothered uh, Tony Dunn mm. or Dennis Irwin when he was in, in his great team. They just did the job, got on with it, but were unbelievably invaluable, obviously, uh, to, to, to the team. Because without them doing their stuff, the star players wouldn't have been able to, to do what they did either. But they, they would, be well, would have been well recognised uh, by Alex Ferguson, or sorry, by Ferguson and Busby, Matt Busby, in his day, they were they were terrific players, and Tony was very very similar in that way to Dennis Irwin. You mentioned Jim Beglin there, and a player who, well, could well, if his career had gone differently, forced his way onto this team because he only ended up playing for the Republic of Ireland for fifteen caps because of that shocking injury that he sustained. Yes. He was on the show last weekend actually and he was very complimentary about your role in his career and starting out at Shamrock Rovers and how you basically turned him from a probably naive culty into a hardened yeah. professional. What what are your memories of Beglin as, as a young player? Great memories. I, I would never describe him as a, as a, a, a culty in any way. Uh, he, he, he always had it uh, uh, Nathan because he had the attitude he had the ability. Uh, he, he, he was one of the best young lads I've seen in terms of what he wants to do, what he needed to do, and was prepared to do it, which is usually hard work. Mm. Uh, and, and I found with, with Jim, you only had to tell him something once, and he did it. But as far as training was concerned uh, and being a pro at a very young age, uh, he, he, was, he was brilliant to work with, and uh, he was a terrific lad. And as you say, he had a very, very unfortunate bad injury that uh, put an end to his career, uh, more or less, anyway. Uh, but Jim was, Jim was a dream uh, uh, for a manager or a coach to work with because he, he was dedicated to what he wanted to do and he was a terrific lad. It wasn't easy for him. He was only a young lad coming up to Dublin from Waterford at that mm. particular time. Uh, and he, but, but he got on with the job uh, and did it, did it brilliantly. Were you still Rovers' manager when he went to Liverpool that summer? No, I think I just you're gone. Just, you're just gone. Was, was he, by the way you talk about him, like was he, like Liverpool are coming in at that stage, they're dominating European football. When you would have heard that he was going to Liverpool, would you have thought he's a player who can get to that standard? Oh, I had no doubt about him. Uh, I had no doubt about him, uh, Nathan, because he was such a good lad. He had the ability, and, and what you're looking for after that, well, what you're looking before that is is the the attitude, mm. the, the willing to work, the willing to willing to learn, Jim had all that. He was Jim was a dream uh, uh, to have as, as a young a young boy, uh, because he was he was determined that he was going to make the grade. He wanted to make the grade. He had the ability to, to do it, and, and all he needed then was the hard work, which he did without any doubt whatsoever. He really worked hard for what he needed to do, and the, he, as I say, he was he was he was he was a dream to to manage and coach. He was a terrific lad. Let's move on to our centre-backs then. Again, no yep. shortage of quality players and a really difficult uh, decision you had to make because you have the calibre of Paul McGrath, Kevin Moran, David O'Leary, Mark Lawrenson, Mick McCarthy, Charlie Hurley. The modern-day players, Richard Dunn is in there as well. He, yeah. All of those players fully deserving of a place in this sort of selection. Yeah, I had John O'Shea in there mm. as well, Gary Brain. Uh, I, I think you mentioned them all there, uh, uh, there Phil Babb. 
in, in, in that particular month. And it's very, very, again, difficult. Richard Dunn is in there. Uh, very, very difficult. But the, the two players I've gone with are Charlie Hurley and Paul McGrath. Right. Charlie Hurley is a, is a, is a name people will recognise, but obviously won't remember an awful lot of people actually playing. I know he had a, he had a very long and brilliant career at Sunderland. Clearly, uh, when he's getting into it, this sort of selection ahead of the likes of uh, Mark Lawrence and, and uh, Kevin Moran was a, a real quality centre half. Oh yeah, it's it's it's, it's a very difficult one. I mean, Dave, we have Dave O'Leary and, and as you say, Kevin Moran, uh, Mick McCarthy was in it. Paul McGrath, well, Paul McGrath's in it. Uh, but but Charlie, obviously, it, it, there, there's some people would remember him, uh, Nathan. The old guys would remember him. But Charlie was in 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 those days what we regard now as a footballing centre-half, you know? Mm. Charlie would be able to play today. He'd be one of the few centre-halves of that time where it was mostly headed away, don't be, don't be looking for too much on the ground. And Charlie was exceptional in those days in that his control of the ball was very, very good. And even in those days could take it out from the back, as we say, or play out from the back. So he was before, before his time uh, at that particular time, but he could do it. He was a big fella. Charlie was about six foot three, excellent in the air. Uh, it read the game well and, and, and had terrific control. So, uh, although we would go back a long time, I'd put Charlie in there. But the players that that, uh, uh, that we had under Jack, for example, with, with Kevin Moore and Mark Lawrence and David O'Leary, uh, Mick McCarthy, Paul McGrath, I mean, these were outstanding players. And like when I'm, when I'm picking these teams, uh, Nathan, I hate looking mm. at them and leaving them out of the team. But it's, it's only a bit of fun. But... Uh, but at the same time, I'd, I'd, I'd like to recognise how brilliant these particular players were. Uh, Paul McGrath, of course, uh, is in there, and uh, and Charlie Early, who was long before these particular lads. Two centre halves then, who could both play a bit of football, because Paul McGrath, as we know, was was oh, just yeah. such a, yeah. a gifted t- and played yeah. in played in midfield in in huge games for club and for country. Yeah. Uh, did you did you prefer him as a centre back to a central midfielder? Well, well, I. I think I said before, Nathan, on the program, when you get a lad who can play like Paul can mm. play, the further you go back, the easier it is. You know? Because the further you go back, the more you're facing the play. So when you move somebody to midfield, and they're obviously in front of the ball a lot, they have to turn on the ball, which Paul could do. Uh, but centre-half, he was just majestic. You know, he was, he was good in the air. He, he, he could, of course, he could play. I mean, he could play anywhere. Paul would play yeah. anywhere and give you and give you a turn for it. You know, uh, but but playing centre half, where he could see the game in front of him, read it, uh, was very very quick, brilliantly balanced for a big fella, and and excellent on the ball. And again, no show off. All these great players, Nathan, what they have in common, they're not out there to show off. They're out there to do the job. And I never saw Paul Paul McGrath take a chance on it in the penalty barrier to show how good he was. You know, he just did it. He did the right things all the time. But he had the, he was a deceptive, deceptive in pace, I think, Paul, mm. and balance. He was terrifically balanced, lad. Uh, but very, very pacey. Uh, when you saw him running, it, it was effortless to him. But well, most things looked effortless to Paul. Uh, but his control was good. He could pass the ball. And playing the centre half, I'd say it was, it was a doddle for him in relation, say, to playing in the middle of the field where it would have been more difficult. So centre-half, he was, he was made for it. His, his control was good, his balance was good, his pace was good. He had everything that a centre-half needed. And mm. Paul, again, was a modest guy. He wasn't trying to show off on the pitch. He got the ball, gave it to the midfield players when he, did, when he had the job done. Didn't try to show off in any way. And I know I'm talking a lot about showing off, but it's a very, very important thing for lads not to lose the run of themselves on the pitch when they're playing well and, and think they can do all sorts of things. Keeping the head, doing the right things, being professional all the time is easier said than done. But Paul could do that brilliantly. I was watching back uh, Ireland against England, Italian 90 last week, and Paul McGrath played in the middle of midfield in that game, and it was striking. Like You touch on the pace that he had to watch him mm. and the ability when the knees weren't gone to just turn quickly on the ball and sprint away from a couple of players. Something that yeah. when you think of the more recent Paul McGrath 1994 World Cup when it was a real backs to the wall job against Italy and showed a, a totally different side that, like that balance that you talk about is something that really stands out with McGrath as well that he, he never looked uncomfortable or that he was been twisted and turned by attacking no. players is, is that something that would have come quite naturally or something that, that you learn very quickly in the game 
Well, I, well, I think the, nat, the, 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 the athletic, uh, athletic attributes, if, that, if I'm saying that mm-hmm. rightly, are there, Nathan. You know, I've seen lads who were well-balanced in that, but they couldn't read the game. They couldn't control the ball very well. So you have to do that as well. So it's a combination of, 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 a, of a number of things that make the great players, which Paul had. You know, he had this turn of pace, which everybody, uh, everybody doesn't have a turn of pace. His control was good. He was good in the air. Uh, so this this made him really the perfect centre half, uh, but it, there, there there are lots of attributes that make a great player. Again, attitude attitude to the game, uh, and a, 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 a modesty as well, Nathan. Not to be saying look how look how good I am. Uh, you know the great players let people see how good they are without going out of their way uh, to do so, uh, and because once they lose their head, their head in that way, they're going to make mistakes. Mm. You know, and Paul, like the, the thing is, what you find with Paul and great centre halves, great players, and, and they used to say that when I was a kid coming to Manchester United, when it's simple, keep it simple. Don't try to show off. The time will come in a match where you have to do things like Paul did, where he wasn't showing off, he was just doing great things, but he wasn't going out of his way to do it. He just did it as it happened, and he had the, the, the natural abilities to do it, read the game well, had good pace, good control, and good balance. Yeah, what, more, what more can you look for, Nathan? <laughs> I was just going to say, what more can you look for, Nathan? Yeah, the, uh, the ultimate compliment and uh, certainly deserving of his place in this all-time 11. So, Shea Given and Gold, back four of Dennis Irwin, Tony Dunn, Paul McGrath and Charlie Hurley. We'll take a quick break, John, and we'll come back and we'll get your midfield okay. and attackers. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen The Pat Kenny Show on tomorrow's programme, are you shocked or entertained or bored by the series Normal People? The significance of VE Day remembered? Henry McKean goes in search of a cattle mart. How safe is the prospective reopening of creches, as well as all the breaking news? The Pat Kenny Show, tomorrow morning at 9. On News Talk. Right, that's it. Just one more bet and I'm done. I haven't got a problem. Sure, it's only scratch cards. Everyone does it. It's hard to take that first step and admit you have a gambling problem. At Helplink, we offer a free gambling addiction service that's available seven days a week and out of hours. If you or someone you know has been affected by gambling, call Helplink now on 0818 99 880 or visit helplink.ie. You wouldn't buy a car without knowing its history. So why would you buy a story without knowing who's telling it. Come here and I tell you. It's not always easy to verify what you see, read, or hear. But now, there's help. Visit www.bmediasmart.ie. Stop, think, check. Be Media Smart. Brought to you by Media Literacy Ireland. It's never been more important to clean around the house. But we all need our Euro to go further too. Well, you'll have everything spotless with Everyday Savers from Dunn Stores. We've antibacterial spray for only one euro, bleach one euro, washing up liquid one euro, and a four pack of kitchen towels, just one euro. Plus, with our 10 or 50 grocery voucher, you save more each time you shop. Dunn Stores, always here for our customers, always better value. Terms and conditions supply, minimum spend required. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. You're welcome back to Thursday's Off The Ball. John Giles is with us and he's selecting his all-time Republic of Ireland 11. If you missed any of it so far, it's Shea Given and Goals, a back four of Dennis Irwin, Tony Dunn, Paul McGrath and Charlie Hurley. Let's get on to the midfield then, John. I think you're going to go to three-man midfield? Yes. So, again, as you go across the midfield, so many possibilities from Ray Houghton, Jason McAteer, Jerry Daly on the opposite wing. You could have the likes of Kevin Sheedy, Liam Brady in there, Andy Townsend, Roy Keane, Ronnie Whelan, Mick Martin, John Sheridan. You're not going to pick yourself in this, as you've pointed out already. So what, what, what three have you gone with? Uh, the three I've gone with is uh, uh, Ronnie Whelan, right. Roy Keane and Liam Brady. It's not a bad midfield. No. no. It's, it's they, brilliant, isn't it? Those, those three brilliant. work well together, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I think they, well, I think they would have played together mm. at some stage. Uh, not, not on a regular basis, but they would have played together. But, uh, like, Ronnie, Ronnie, was, Ronnie, Ronnie was, again, played in the star-studded Liverpool team. 
uh, Nathan. And with not playing for England, I don't think probably didn't get the credit that he deserved and what he contributed to the Liverpool team. Uh, but obviously for people in the game, obviously, and people who followed, followed Liverpool realised what, what Ronnie did. But when you're playing with Dalglish and Rush and Hansen and, and Sunes, it, it's, not, it's not easy to get the headlines. Mm. Uh, but there again, I don't think Ronnie, like most of the terrific, terrific players, great players that I know, don't care about the headlines, Nathan. You know, they're more concerned about doing the stuff on the pitch, contributing to the team effort, which Ronnie did. And Ronnie did it in a big way. He was a very, very skillful lad, a good attitude to the game, uh, did his stuff. Uh, again, simple when it was on to be a go simple, didn't try to show off, got on with the job being a professional and, and, and had, had a great career. I think Ronnie was a terrific player. An incredible... it, would been, it would have been underrated, I mm. think, Nathan, in relation to, say, Graham Sinness, Dalek Leash, these... Uh, you know, these were great players that he that he played with, but Ronnie did did his bit more than did his bit for, in that particular team and with the Irish team. And incredible when you look back in his career, he makes his breakthrough into that Liverpool team as a 19 year old. It's a Liverpool team that have just won the European Cup, and he plays a huge amount of games in the 81 82 season where they win the league. He goes on to win six yeah. leagues. He wins wins the European Cup. And you talk a lot about you know players if they if they're good enough age doesn't matter for him to force his way into that side of that quality at nineteen twenty is is quite yeah. remarkable. Yeah, I think he was always an outstanding player, outstanding schoolboy. Actually, when I was at Rovers, I tried to sign him because I knew his his dad, Ron Ronnie Senior. Mm. I played with Ronnie Senior, would right. you believe? Yeah, in in the international team, uh, who's who's also a very 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 good player. He's played for St. Pat's. Uh, he didn't play midfield. He was more striker. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, we're just having a slight problem with John's line at the moment. Uh, we're talking about Ronnie Whelan. The midfield, uh, in case you missed it there, is Ronnie Whelan, Roy Keane and Lee Brady. I don't think anyone could have any complaints. Sorry, John, you're, ba you're back with us there. You were just talking about, about how you yeah. tried to sign uh, a very young uh, Ronnie Whelan at one stage. Yeah, yeah. He was, well, I, I was in charge. I, was, I was, think I was in charge of the under-18 team, mm. the, the U team at that. And I, honestly, Ronnie was a, an outstanding player. Uh, and I think he was, he was he was he was already gone to Liverpool at that particular time, uh, but as you say, he, he didn't he didn't have to be there very long to establish himself. He was a, he was an extremely good player. Of course, his father before him, I think, would have given him a lot of good co coaching. Ronnie Senior, who was a, a very 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 good player, uh, but Ronnie settled in. I think I, like some lads are like that. You know, they're they're, they're pros, they're professionals from the time they're born, uh, uh, Nathan. And yeah. I think Ronnie Ronnie was like that. He no problem settling into the Liverpool team, getting into the Liverpool team and establishing himself there. He was excellent. Maybe the, one of the reasons why he was underrated, and you do often see him uh, put up there as maybe Liverpool's most underrated player, was that there wasn't one thing that stood out. Even at times he would play out in the wing, but he wasn't your stereotypical tricky winger. He wasn't the Sunes archetypal real tough guy. He just sort of did everything really well. Yeah, well, as I say, when you're playing in the stars to the team, and I know I'm repeating myself a couple of times here, you've got Kenny, Kenny Dalglish, Rush, Sunes, Hansen, uh, and like it's, it's, it's hard to, to stand out mm. above those guys, but they know, and, 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 the, and the, the people behind the scenes, whether it be Paisley, whoever was his manager, would know the value. I mean, there's one thing with publicity, that's one thing element of the game, it's probably the least important element to the game uh, in terms of, of, of people like uh, Ronnie. And again, Ronnie, like when, you, when you're playing for the Republic of Ireland, Nathan, in England, you don't get an awful lot of publicity for it. You know, whereas mm. if you're playing for, for, for England, for example, uh, and I'm only talking about the press, press situation, I'd say Ronnie, Ronnie wouldn't care about that. And he's, the players around him wouldn't be bothered about that. Either they know what he did, and the pros would know what he did on the pitch, where it really mattered. But he he was an unsung hero in many ways. But again, it showed his professionalism, in that he didn't try to force himself into the limelight. Because when players start to try to force themselves in, they make complete idiots of themselves, Nathan. And the pros at the club, the manager, and the players around him wouldn't have it at all. Ronnie accepted what his role was in the team. If he never was going to be one of the the high flyers, as it were, in the press and that, it didn't bother, them, bother him in any way. He was, he was a pro and got on with the job and did it brilliantly. Your other two midfielders then, Roy Keane was in your Manchester United eleven, and Liam Brady was in your Arsenal eleven, and uh, you spoke brilliantly, I think, about both of them 
at the time. From an Irish point of view, it's hard to talk in some ways about Roy without uh, bringing up Saipan, and we only have 10 minutes left, so we better not go down that route no. again. Hey, does that, though, tarnish in any way when you think about Roy Keane in Ireland? No, I, I don't think it, it, it tarnishes Roy Keane as a player, Nathan, mm. in any way. It was an unfortunate thing that happened, and as you say, we're better off not talking about it than talking about it because there's more to talk about in Roy Keane than that particular incident. I, I think it was a pity it happened because uh, I think we could have done even better in the World Cup at that particular time with Roy Keane playing. There's no doubt about that. I mean, Roy Keane was one of the great players. Right? Unfortunately, that happened. But as far as the playing is concerned, I mean, I've always said about Roy Keane, if, 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 if I was in, the, in, in, the, in, the, in, in trouble in a war, I'd want Roy Keane beside me. Uh, and, and one of the biggest compliments I can pay, pay him, Roy Keane was at his best when the team needed him the most. Mm. In other words, if you were winning 3 0, Roy Keane could go off the pitch. You know, but if you're losing 1 0 or 2 0 with 15, 20 minutes to go, he was the man that was going to drive it on for Manchester United and Ireland as well. That's the, that's the temperament, that's the personality he had, uh, Nathan. Never satisfied with himself. And, and I found with all the great players, great players are never satisfied with themselves. When I hear them after a match talking, they've had a great game, and they're concentrating the two or three things or four things they didn't do well. So the things that you do well, you take for granted. The things you didn't do well, you've got to put right. But I never saw Roy Keane where he was satisfied with himself on the pitch. Now, that's his temperament as well. I think there were, there were times maybe with his teammates, he could have been a little bit kinder to them in certain situations, but not very often. He was driving, driving, driving. But the big thing was, he wasn't just driving his mates. He was driving himself. Yeah. So if you needed somebody, if I needed somebody beside me in a hard match, very difficult, and people getting stuck in and doing other things, that's very, very difficult. I'd want Roy Keane beside me. As I said, people should listen back to the Arsenal eleven uh, to listen to you talking about Liam Brady and just what a beautiful player he was. So uh, no doubt, I don't think that he was ever going to be in there. The attacking players then, the three attacking players, again, the selection that you have available to you, Robbie Keane and all the goals he scored, Niall Quinn, Tony Cascarino, Damien Duff, Steve Highway, Frank Stapleton, uh, Don Givens, Terry Conway... There is a lot of good quality attacking players who, who perform brilliantly for club and country in there. Who have you gone as your front three? I've gone with Frank Stapleton, okay. Robbie Keane, right. and Steve Highway. Steve Highway. No Damien yes. Duff. No Damien. I'm sorry to say. I love Damien, uh, but I have to pick. This is the hard part of it, uh, Nathan, you know, that I have to do that. I have to leave people like him out. Mm. I'm not leaving them out because it's, 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 only a, it's only a bit of fun, but that's, that's, that's my opinion on it. And I'll just say a quick word on Liam Brady. Liam Brady was a beautiful player, uh, Nathan. You know, and I mean beautiful because mm. he was easy to watch. He could go past people. He could do all the things. I, he, was, he, was, he was absolutely brilliant player, and he did it for, for the Irish team. He did it for Arsenal as well. But to watch him, he had that attitude, well, not attitude, style, that he looked easy, 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 and next thing he's flying past players. So I'll finish on that. Wonderful player, and would definitely be has to be in my team. Yeah. But to talk about the other lads, as you say, there's a few lads you could mention in 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 the forwards there. Uh, that Don Gibbons, for example, in my time, you know, when 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 we started to do well, he scored four three goals against the USSR, four goals in the next match mm. against hmm. Turkey, and then two. Uh, he, 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 he was on. He was, he was that's, when he was on a, on a run. He was on a run. But I, I, I just, we won't have time to talk about them all, uh, Nathan. But Steve Highway, some people would remember. Steve Highway was in, in a, a winger. Yeah. And there's not many wingers around. There wasn't that many around in my day as well. But could go past people very, very quick. Uh, could, really, could really play. So, so, but to leave the other lads out, I, feel, I, I always feel guilty about it. Yeah, talk you know, a bit more about Highway there, because obviously for for some of us, like having an Ireland eleven without Damien Duff seems unimaginable. But then you look at what Steve Highway achieved during his career, again in a brilliant Liverpool team, always hmm. getting picked, four league titles, part of their first two European Cup winning sides. Uh, like, would he have been a similar player to Damien Duff? Uh, well, well, first of all, he was a right-footed player yeah. on the left wing. Um, he, he well. Damien did what he did, which was to go past people as well. So did Steve, Steve Highway, you know. Uh, but as you said, the things that he won and, and the team that he was in at that particular time, 
it, the reason I picked him is obviously if I'm a Damien, I feel I think the world of Damien, but I'd, I'd have to on, honestly pick uh, Steve Highway because of the, the attributes he had. He could go past people. He was very, very quick. He could score a few goals. He could make a lot of goals. But uh, he was he was he was a natural left winger that really did his stuff for Liverpool. Uh, uh, Nathan, there's no doubt about that. He would have played a lot for you as well when you were the Irish manager. When when he pulled on the green jersey of Ireland, then was he able to replicate that club form? Um, well, we, well, he played in the bad old days as well when <laughs> we weren't going very well. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, he could he could play uh, whatever he, whatever situation he was in, uh, Nathan. Like he, he, there's a lot of times now he wasn't released by. There was there was a time now when I was managing him before. It, 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 <clears throat> It wasn't uh, automatic that you could get released. The club had to pr- give you permission to pick the player. To di- you didn't have to release the player. So there was lots of times. Obviously, Liverpool didn't uh, didn't want to release him. Right. Now it's so automatic, you as you know, Nathan. Like it, 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 that's why the players now are medically examined if they don't turn up and that. Because in those days, the manager used to say, uh, Don Revy was the same with me. I'm not releasing you. And that was it. But Steve, when he did play, played. Yeah. Uh, Robbie Keane, an automatic selection, I guess? I think so. Well, Robbie's a great goal-scoring record, as we know. Mm. Uh, I mean, to score the amount of goals he goal for the was was phenomenal uh, because we weren't always a top team, Nathan, as we know. Yeah, like it is, uh, six, 68 international goals for the Republic of Ireland is, is a bit insane. Well, it's brilliant. Mm. It's brilliant. I think Robbie was a natural goal scorer. I think from the time he was a kid. There, there are players like that, and what happens a lot... They come alive when there's a goal, t- goal scoring chance. I mean, Robbie wasn't a great player outside the box. You wouldn't expect him to be. But, but obviously he's looking, 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 and it's this instinct they have, these great goal scorers, uh, to see, see it before anybody else. And that's what Robbie did. And also having the ability that when you do see it and get there, to put it away. Yeah. I mean, the, the Robbie's goal scoring record for the Irish team uh, has been phenomenal. Phenomenal. And, was uh, it was it Alan Clark you were talking about last week that always had that sort of inner confidence that even if he missed three chances he always felt he was going to score the next one? Oh, definitely. Did Robbie have that? I, I don't think I don't think Robbie was as arrogant as Alan. Right. Clark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, but I'm, I'm only half joking now. But Alan was a terrific finisher. All these finishers have it, Nathan, mm. that they really come alive when there's a goal scoring chance. You know, they're ahead of everybody else. They know what they're going to do before any, before before anybody knows what they're even trying to do. And it's a, it's a natural gift to be able to do it, to stay calm. Uh, and, and, and Because it's the hardest thing is scoring goals in, on a football pitch, definitely the hardest thing to do. Uh, and they make it look easy. Mm. And the, what, what was great about Robbie's record, I mean, Robbie wasn't playing for Brazil or Argentina yeah. where they were on top all the time. You know, a lot of the time we, 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 were, we were up against it. So Robbie didn't have that many chances. So to get the goals that he scored was, was phenomenal. He was just a natural goal scorer. I think he had it from the time he was three years old. Hmm. Mentioning uh, the amount of goals then probably brings us on to Frank Stapleton just before we finish up because he was the record goal scorer with 20 goals in his 71 caps. Uh, Again, a player who had a brilliant club career from Arsenal to Manchester United and went all around the place after that. And before Robbie Keane, like Frank Stapleton would have been seen as Ireland's greatest ever striker. Well, I, I think he was an he was an all round player. Mm. Uh, I think Robbie was a complete goal scorer, and uh, sometimes, like like with Robbie, sometimes would be out of the match for fifteen twenty minutes, and next thing he scored in a goal. Frank Stapleton was was in the match all the time. In other words, he contributed in the way as a tar- used to call it the target man in my day, uh, and he was a good positional player in that to link it up, Nathan. Even if he wasn't scoring goals, he was able to link it up and would probably make more goals for his, t- his side than Robbie would. Yeah. You know? Because we, he's more all-round all round type of player uh, that, that played in that position. In other words, he was the tar- we used to call the target man. You could hit him, he could hold it well and bring players into the game. And he was brilliant at that. And a very very good in the air as well. Mm. But really intelligent player for linking it, linking it up. You know, I played with Frank a few times when I was in the coming near the end of my days. And I, when I was in the middle, I could always find him easily. Right. Even in a, in, 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 in a tight area, you could find him, you could play it into him and he could lay it off to, right. lay it off to or go on his own, whatever he wanted to do with the ball. 
Uh, unfortunately, John, the clock has got the better of us again. Your all-time Republic of Ireland 11 then is Shea Given, a back four of Dennis Irwin, Tony Dunn, Paul McGrath, Charlie Hurley. In midfield is Roy Keane, uh, Liam Brady and Ronnie Whelan. And then a front three of Steve Highway, Frank Stapleton and Robbie Keane. Great stuff as always, John. I think next week uh, we're going to maybe look at the best 11 players you ever played against. So you have a bit of time to think about that. Yep. Yeah, plenty of time, Nathan. All right. I, 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 Too I, much time. I'll get, I'll get down to it straight away. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. John, great stuff. If you missed out Thanks, on any Nathan. of that, John Giles, all time Republic of Ireland 11. It'll be up on offtheball.com very shortly. Football on Off the Ball with Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Shearer and Owen. News Talk already gives you your daily fix of news and entertainment. But wouldn't you like a little bit more? News Talk Extra is everything you might have missed, plus expert tips, podcasts, and competitions, all straight to your inbox. Subscribe now at newstalk.com slash extra. At Guaranteed Irish, we believe enterprise is at the heart of thriving communities. Like IE Domain Registry, 